Hi everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Uh, today we are going to be looking at what I deem to be some real underrated gems of different species of gecko. So first up, we are looking at Eurodactylodes, otherwise known as chameleon geckos. These are native to New Caledonia, so that is the same kind of environment as crested geckos and gargoyle geckos and mossy geckos. So some of the species which you're probably already familiar with, but these guys, as you can see from this one here, this is an adult female, they are a lot smaller than most of those other species that we are looking at at the moment. Here is an adult Eurodactylodus agricoli, so this is Bauer's chameleon gecko. There are four different species of chameleon gecko, of which here we actually breed three out of four of the different species. And this is an adult female. The reason that I point out that it's an adult female is because there is quite a, uh, quite a considerable noticeable difference in terms of the size between the males and the females. So that would be classed as sexual dimorphism. So there is a, an immediate difference between them. So the male you can see is he's not quite as long and he tends to be a little bit finer in terms of build than the female. So. Their natural habitat, they are a New Caledonian species and it is sclerophyll forest where they, would, uh, where they would live. That is kind of a tropical woodland and these are a low living shrub kind of species. So they would normally be found no more than a couple of meters off the ground and their preferred habitat is in amongst thin twigs. So they will often be found almost just like hugging onto very thin twigs and their movement generally speaking is quite slow and methodical so you won't sort of uh, you won't see them darting around like some other smaller species of gecko they definitely don't tend to use speed to evade predators it's more just stealth and sort of like that that methodical movement they do have a prehensile tail which enables them when they are climbing and i might be able to get one to show you here but it's pretty good at kind of counterbalancing them and just enabling them to move through their environment of sort of thinner twigs. Because all of the various different species of chameleon gecko are relatively small in stature, uh, no more than sort of about 12 centimetres I would say is a sort of uh, adult size for them. It means that the size enclosure that they need isn't as large as you would expect for like a crested gecko or a gargoyle gecko. This here is the 30 centimetre by 30 centimetre by 60 centimetre high tank by Exoterra. This is an appropriate size for one or two chameleon geckos. So this is the kind of enclosure that we would recommend people keep them in. Obviously if you've got space for larger, larger enclosures are always going to be better. When it comes to heating and lighting for your chameleon gecko, New Caledonia, the environment there is relatively similar to British summertime. So we are talking daytime highs of no more than about 28 degrees normally. It can get as high as about 30 degrees, but it doesn't really want to get any warmer than that, that's for sure. So we normally try and keep all of our chameleon geckos somewhere around about 26, 27 degrees as their general ambient temperature. In order to do that, you can either, you could use a high power heat mat stuck to the side of the enclosure and then oh, and then you could run that through a mat stat or alternatively so you can run your high power heat mat through a mat stat alternatively you may wish to use a clamp lamp on the surface uh, sort of on the lid of your enclosure and then that you could then run a something like a, a low wattage halogen, like the 35 watt halogens from Arcadia, or potentially a deep heat projector or a ceramic. That way you can control the ambient air temperature for them. And then as far as lighting goes, obviously they do need access to UV. So we would always recommend that you use something like the Arcadia Shade Dweller uh, to provide them with UV. That should be on during the day and off at night, approximately a 12 on 12 off light cycle. And if you have a live planted enclosure, we would also recommend you use some form of LED lighting just to benefit the plants as well. That's all you are going to require. Obviously some form of a thermometer to keep an eye on your temperatures. And should you wish to, when using bulbs, you should probably be using a dimming thermostat or potentially even something a little bit more complicated, such as some of the smartphone app controlled thermostats like the Microclimate Evo, which is 
in our opinion, one of the best thermostats on the market at the moment. When it comes to preparing the habitat for your chameleon geckos, obviously you're going to need some form of a substrate which is going to hold a little bit of humidity, so the kind of sclerophyll and tropical woodlands in which they would naturally live. The ambient humidity there is going to be somewhere between about 50 and 70 percent. Some of the various substrates that you can use include the BioLife Forest by ProRep. This is quite a nice substrate. Alternatively, you've got things like Cresty Life, Arcadia Earth Mix, or even just simple cocoa fiber or coir blocks. So any of those things can be used. It's just something to provide a little bit of added humidity. If you have a pair or a breeding group of them as well, it means that the females can then lay their eggs down in the substrate. You don't need to provide any form of additional laying site for them as well, assuming that you're gonna be using some form of uh, humidity holding substrate across the entire base. When it comes to decorating their environment, they are a shrub dwelling species. So rather than thick branches and uh, sort of cork flats and things like that, which are commonly used, you're actually going to be looking more for much thinner twigs. So this is their preferred kind of habitat. They will actively cling on to these thin twigs. So here we've got a piece of uh, the redwood vine. This is always a popular choice with them. And then when it comes to live plants, again, you're looking for more thinner stemmed species. So here we've got just a, a cameodora or a parlor palm. That's, uh, that's quite a nice uh, plant to use in their enclosure. And then uh, Ficus benjamina, this is kind of like a general mainstay. Um, they all tend, to, all tend to appreciate this being in their environment. So with a mixture of thin twigs and live plants, that's pretty much all you're gonna need to provide them with, other than obviously some form of a water bowl. When it comes to the diet of chameleon geckos, like many of the other New Caledonian species, they are omnivorous by nature, so as well as eating live insects, so uh, quite often that could be small crickets or micro hoppers. Um, they would also take things like the waxworm moths as well. As well as that, they will also eat any of the artificial diets that tend to be marketed towards crested geckos, so that's things like the rapashi or pangea, or the Arcadia Sticky Foot Gold, any of these are also going to be readily accepted by your chameleon geckos. So what we tend to do is we tend to alternate between offering them live food on one feed and then on the next feed we tend to offer them some of the artificial diet. And then obviously with all of your live food you're still supplementing with a calcium supplement and you can use occasional vitamin D3 but assuming that you're providing them with good levels of lighting, this should only ever be required on a minimal kind of basis for them. From a dietary perspective, they're not huge eaters, they're not going to eat you out of house and home, far from it to be honest with you. Uh, I would say that they're a relatively low maintenance species to keep. Of final note, as you can see, this is a very readily handleable species. As you can see, I've sort of, I've produced most of this uh, the entire time whilst whilst I've had one of these uh, wonderful chameleon geckos just happily sat on my hand here. So they are the sort of species that so long as you're respectful and gentle with them, they can be handled. I would say that they're also quite an active and inquisitive species. Do be aware that when you go into their enclosure and you're opening the doors, because they have that slow and methodical sort of uh, movement, it means that they may well come over and investigate the door. And if you turn your back, you may not notice them kind of rapid but at the same time very smoothly just kind of glide out of their enclosure. For this reason for quite some time we nicknamed these shifty geckos just because of their general demeanour where they would kind of slink out of the enclosure if you weren't paying attention. All in all though these are an absolutely amazing species and very underrated. If you are interested in crested geckos or gargoyle geckos or any of the new Caledonian species to be honest with you these are an absolute must-have kind of species.